Ready to have a great day at Universal Studios? And guess what? I'm not riding a single ride. I'm spending the day at Universal Studios Florida, the original theme park here, and again, not writing a single thing. Instead, I'm focusing on something I don't think gets enough credit at Universal, the entertainment. From over-the-top stuntaculars to magical puppets and just good vibes and good times, there are tons of different live entertainment offerings, and I'm going to attempt to see them all today, which is going to be quite a Tetris game. Plus, I'm going to be ranking them against themselves, so when we're done, we have a list of how these 11 shows stack up against one another, and hopefully you have a new thing on your agenda next time you come to Universal. But we got to get going. The first one starts in like three minutes. I love walking into this park because they play the scores from Universal Pictures. So Back to the Future, E.T., Jaws, Jurassic Park, and many more. And it's just such an epic way to begin your theme park day. Now, with Universal Entertainment, there's not a ton of big offerings right now. The projection show on the water they had here at Universal Studios Florida at night is under refurbishment, as is the nighttime castle show on Hogwarts over at Islands of Adventure. They also don't currently have a parade, but there are tons of little shows throughout the day I think most people overlook, and that's what we're focusing on today. But because they don't have big firework productions or Fantasmic like over at Disney, people don't tend to pair Universal and entertainment together when they really should. They've got some older shows, some classic shows, some high tech shows, a brand new show that I haven't even seen yet. So I'm excited to spend the whole day watching theme park entertainment, which I absolutely adore and sharing with you some of these underrated gems throughout the park. But to start things off, we are headed to New York to listen to Sing It, which is an a cappella group a la Glee or Pitch Perfect. And I'm excited because I love a poppy mashup. I've heard them do an ABBA mashup. I've heard them do some MJ. Let's see what they've got for us today. Start this off in a nice, smooth beat. Are you ready to rumble? Yes. Audience, are you ready to sing along? Show number one, Sing It Acapella Group done. I enjoyed it. I like an acapella group. It really reminds me of watching Pitch Perfect, which I think is a fun vibe. I don't know if this is one of the shows that you really need to schedule into your day, but what I like about these mini shows, and you're gonna see a bunch of them, is that they're fun filler between long lines for the attractions, or maybe you've gotten a cold beer from Finnegan's and you wanna enjoy some live music. You can find the show times for these in the app, but I don't think this one's gonna to top the list as far as must-sees, but I've always enjoyed it. My one criticism, at least on this set, it was all about the dude singers, and I wanted the lady singers to shine more because they seemed like they had really excellent voices. But overall, I don't know how acapella groups do that. I don't know how they make those noises with their mouths, but they are very talented. And now we don't have to go too far because one of my favorite shows is going to happen right in the same spot, which is great because it's shady here and it's 1,000 degrees outside. But for now, Sing It Acapella Group is number one on the list. Next on my list is the Blues Brothers show, which is live music with Jake and Elwood from the 1980 film, The Blues Brothers. Now you don't have to have seen the Blues Brothers to enjoy this show. As long as you like good live music, you're in for a treat. They usually have a live saxophone player with them and Mabel the server will come in and jam on some tunes. It's just good classic soul and rock and they should be rolling up in their sweet car any minute now. show number two the blues brothers check i love the blues brothers now i was a little disappointed that mabel the waitress didn't come out but i guess things are pretty busy at the restaurant however i think their shows are so fun and high energy and they're just playing good classic american rock music so if you're into that this is one that i think you should look at the show times for and make it a point to see it's one of my favorite things to do in the afternoon again grab a drink grab a snack there's starbucks right here there's finnegan's right here and enjoy the blues brothers because i think they're a lot of fun so Sorry to sing it, you were great, but you're no longer at the top spot. Blues Brothers number one, sing it number two. We'll see how it all shakes out at the end. And once again, we don't have to go very far because we're headed to a street party. Don't have to go too far once again because we're headed to our first street party of the day. This one is a Vamos Bailalo, which is, come on, dance it. 
in English. This is a Latin street party. Think West Side Story meets In the Heights. I've only seen it a couple other times, but y'all, it is so fun. It's got great music, it's got audience participation, and you're just gonna leave smiling. And I'm finding a spot right here, and I, you know what, I am ready to dance it. Let's go. Sorry, Blues Brothers, you're already bumped to number two. Vamos is such a fun show. First of all, if you're not gonna get down with Gloria Estefan and Henry Iglesias, I don't know what's wrong with you because the music is fantastic. You can't help but move and dance a little bit along in your spot. Second of all, the cast looks like they are having the best time. They are also excited to be there. And speaking of the cast, one thing I think Universal does really, really well is representation throughout the cast. Not only is this an entire show themed to Latin dancing and Latin culture, but they had curvier dancers. They had same-sex couples dancing. It wasn't a big deal. It was just part of the show. Everybody was having a great time and it literally brings a tear to my eye because you don't often see that in theme park entertainment and Universal's been adding that very subtly more and more and I just think that is so wonderful. Number three, the audience loves it. Not just the audience participation part where they pull you out and they teach you some Latin dancing. Uh, one very kind gentleman pulled me out and taught me how to merengue. I'm not the best at it and I can't quite figure out why, uh, but I do not have as much rhythm as them. But it's so much fun and you laugh and you get to dance and I saw families dancing and little kids dancing and grandparents dancing with the performers as well as with each other and it's just one of those shows that everybody has a great time. This is another one that if you like that kind of music and I, I don't know how you could not feel the rhythm in your soul when you hear that kind of music. I mean who doesn't love Henry Church's? You know what I mean? It just you feel like dancing when you hear it. Great great show. Highly recommend and it's taking the top spot. Now we have a few minutes to kill but we don't want to go too far because our next show is just right down the street. So I think we're going to get a little snack and then we will uh, build some beats. Got my snack. Because despite what Max and Alan say, coffee is a snack. It is a survival tool. It is the fuel that feeds me and gets me to my goals. It is a way of life. Plus the Starbucks is conveniently right there. Before we get excited about these beats though, just wanted to do a little friendly, don't be a jerk in the park, you say. Hey, say thank you to the team members and cast members that help you. I was waiting to pick up my coffee and I think one of every three or four people said thank you to the barista who called their name and gave them their drink. <laughs> Doesn't seem that hard, seems polite, seems nice. They're working hard to make you a delicious snack. Say thank you, do what your mom told you. But here they are, the legendary beat builders. This is one of my favorite shows. I think I've said that about like two or three things so far. We've only done four, but I really, really, really mean it this time. I just love the beat builders so much. Like drinking a coffee, jamming out to the beat builders is an ideal situation for me. I always say that they're like the jammiters, but harder. This is hard because I really enjoyed Mamos, but I got to put the beat builders on top. I think they are so talented. It will never cease to amaze me how they can bang on buckets and wrenches and wood and it sounds like that and the show is so high energy and everyone's having a good time. I also love that they do seasonal overlays so like during Mardi Gras they'll throw beads, during Christmas they'll do some like vibey Christmas music. So I gotta put beat builders on top for now. We're headed 
to the wizarding world, but I'm getting distracted. And now we're headed into Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Diagon Alley, my favorite theme park land in the entire universe because two of the four little wizarding shows are here and the other two are over in Islands of Adventure. Here you can see the tales of Beetle the Bard and Celestina Warbeck. So we're gonna check both of those out. These are gonna be hard to rank because my love of Harry Potter makes me extremely biased. And unlike Sweet Beats that I think pretty much anyone would enjoy, I think you'll really only enjoy these if you also love Harry Potter. And here it is, friends. Things that never get old for a million. Ugh, I just love being in here so much. The first show on our list today is Tales of Beetle the Bard. This is where they have magical theater students tell a story from Beetle the Bard. Now it used to be a couple different ones, but recently they've just been doing the Tale of the Three Brothers, which is the story from Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows about the three different Hallows. The Cloak of Invisibility, the Elder Wand, and the Resurrection Stone. He pretended to congratulate the three brothers upon their magic and said that each had earned a prize for having been clever enough to evade him. Then, when upon he stole the ball dead with it, the brother's life. The figure of the girl he wanted to marry before untimely death appeared once before him. Then the youngest brother shared the cloak of invisibility. wrapped up the tales of Beetle the Bard, and yes, it was the tale of the three brothers. This one is so hard to rank because again, as a diehard Harry Potter fan, I love the little shows. I feel like they are really a great immersive element into this already incredibly immersive land. And I love getting a beer or a butter beer or some kind of snack and enjoying the live entertainment. However, unlike the others, which is just music, I really think it's your love of the show is contingent upon your love of Harry Potter. I will say it's a very short show. The entire thing was eight minutes long, so it's not gonna take a big chunk out of your day. I think I'm gonna put it under Beat Builders and tied with Bamos. It's really hard to say this is better than Bamos as far as a like the way it makes you feel because you just wanna dance and there was so much good and fun about Bamos. But I think technically the show is cooler. Like I mean that like from the puppetry and the cool effects that they use is more advanced. Um, and I just love the storytelling and the style of this show for a Harry Potter fan. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put it right in there. It's still top three, but I don't think it beats out the Beat Builders. It is, I would say, if you're gonna see one of the four Harry Potter shows, it's my personal favorite, just because I think the puppets are really cool. I think the way they did that story and stylized it to look like the very cool animation from the movies are really cool. And that story is so instrumental to Harry Potter as a, as a story. Um, that I really enjoy that. Now, I've got about 20 minutes before our next Wizarding World production. Oh no, poor me. 20 free minutes in Diagon Alley. What's a girl to do? A girl is to wander and enjoy, maybe check out merchandise or get a snack, TBD. Let's pop into Weasley's Wizard Wheezes to see if they have anything new and whimsical and fun. Maybe also get a treat at Sugar Plums while we're at it. I don't quite have time to get lunch in between these shows because it's lunch rush right now, so all the food stands have long lines. But I think I could get a little treat. I do love this store. It's so fun. It's so full of Easter eggs. I've pointed out some of them in different videos, but I'm thinking of doing a gigantic Secrets of the Wizarding World video. I've had this on the calendar for a while and uh, haven't been able to film it where I just do like, I don't know, a hundred tiny details and secrets and stuff like that's umbridge fireworks you know let me know if you'd watch that Grabbed myself a little treat from Sugar Plums. 
This is the candy shop on the Diagon Alley side. It's not as big or as well known as Honey Dukes, which is in the other park, but it has a lot of the same offerings and these often sell out. So I was excited to grab one. They get a limited inventory in the bakery cases, both here and Honey Dukes. So if there's something you have your eye on, like a pumpkin pasty or a ginger newt, I recommend going earlier in the day rather than later to save yourself from treat disappointment. But I love the ginger newt. It's basically a soft ginger cookie and it tastes like different autumnal spices like nutmeg and ginger. It's got a light layer of glaze on it and I find it to be the perfect sweet treat that's a little bit spicy, not hot, spicy, again, autumnal spices. Um, and it's way less sweet than things like the no melt ice cream, which is literally just frosting in a cup or the cauldron cake, etc. cetera. Mm. A perfect little treat to take us to our next show. We're staying in the Wizarding World, not going too far, but it's time to see Miss Celestina. For those that aren't diehard Harry Potter book fans specifically, you may not know who Celestina Warbeck and her backup singers, the Banshees, are. Celestina is a jazz singer, lounge singer, crooner, uh, musician in the Wizarding World that Molly Weasley loves and forces everyone to listen to her on the radio when they come home for Christmas at the borough. So I actually love that it's such a niche wizard reference and probably makes no sense to people that haven't read the books. I love that about a lot of things in this land, but that's who Celestina is and that's the performance we're about to see. Celestina Warbeck, check. You know, I really do enjoy that show. Every time I watch it, I have a smile on my face. I love that they've finally brought back the audience participation where they choose a guy out of the audience and do like a whole number with them. It's very entertaining. Universal does audience participation really well. The thing about Celestina is, again, if you're not a Harry Potter fan, this may not be for you. I think even more so than Tales of Beetle the Bard, because at least that's in the movies. And that's a story you may be familiar with. This is songs written based on the books, but it's completely new music that you've never heard before. I'm lucky enough to have seen it multiple times, so I know the songs and can understand the lyrics, but if this is your first time seeing it, you might be like, what is she talking about? Especially if you're not a diehard Harry Potter fan. I think for the average person, this would rank below Blues Brothers, but above Sing It. And I think for me though, as a wizarding person, I'm gonna tie it with Blues Brothers. So for my two Wizarding World shows, I'm kind of putting them tied with other things because there's the caveat that you have to be a Wizarding World fan. So I think that feels fair. And now, as much as it pains me, we're headed out of the Wizarding World and we have a little break, so we're gonna do some lunch. I've got about 40 minutes till the next show time. And as much as I would love to stay in Wizarding World and eat fish and chips, I'm gonna try somewhere I haven't eaten a ton at just to review a new item, see, see how it goes. Goodbye, Wizarding World. I love you. Grabbed a bite to eat at Fast Food Boulevard in Springfield, which is the Simpsons area. Now, Fast Food Boulevard has a variety of things to choose from. It's a great place to go if you've got a big group and everyone wants something different because they've got pizza, they've got fish and chips and other seafood items, they've got salads and sandwiches, they've got Krusty Burger, which is burgers. They also have veggie burgers. There's Cletus's Chicken Shack, where you can do a chicken and waffle sandwich or some different chicken dishes. They also have Flame and Moe's in there, which does some specialty beverages themed to The Simpsons. I would highly recommend mobile ordering though because it's very, very busy in there and mobile order, while it took a few minutes, maybe five, 10 minutes to get my order, much faster than the regular line and the team members are working really hard to get all the orders out. That said, couldn't find any seating in there so I found ample seating right outside here, right outside our next show in a fan, which I love, to eat my caprese salad. Never had a caprese salad here at Universal but it's so hot outside today, wanted something a little bit lighter and I thought this was a little more unique than a Caesar, so why not give it a whirl? I love a good caprese. I wish I'd had the option to add like some chicken or something on here, but all I could get was just this. I love a good caprese. Just mozzarella cheese, tomatoes, balsamic, and some basil. They did put this one on a bed of lettuce though for extra green. Wish there was a little more basil. Boop. Hmm. Hey, Poppy. Hello, cute cat girl I don't know, but I like your ears. Anyway, this is completely fine. It's nothing unique, but it is a very decent caprese salad. Big chunks of cheese, tomatoes are fresh. Like the basil on there, I wish there was a little more basil, 
The uh, the vinaigrette obviously is not house made, but it's good. It's acidic. It's a little tangy. Would I get this again? Probably, but it's definitely not my first choice for a salad or a lighter dish in the park. That would be up at Today Cafe, but that's all the way at the front of the park. And our next show is literally, I'm looking at the amphitheater, so I didn't have time to go all the way up there. If you really want a good sandwich or salad or something lighter, that's what I'd recommend. But if you are coming to Fast Food Boulevard and you don't want something fried or really heavy, this isn't bad. I don't know how full it's gonna keep me though. Headed into our next show. This is also the first of the big like theater shows where there's actually an amphitheater and a place to sit down, though it's not inside as a heads up. Animal actors on location. This is a stunt show, but the stunts are performed by animals, which is awesome. And these are animals that have been in real movies and TV shows. It's not exotic animals or anything, but it's like dogs and cats and birds. And they're really cute and it's pretty funny. And you learn about how they use animals in, in TV and movies. It doesn't tend to fill up. However, if you do have an express pass, it's nice knowing you could come in at the last minute uh, and be prioritized. I would say if you want to see the show, I'm here on a pretty busy summer day and I'm walking in like seven minutes before showtime and there's plenty of seats. <laughs> on location check. I do really enjoy that show every time I see it as someone who's a little bit of a movie nerd and a pop culture fan and loves fun facts. It's cool to see animals like Frank the Pug from Men in Black. And it's cool to see how they do some of the special effects like the bird flying for different movies. Plus, who doesn't want to see like really cute dogs? I always want to see really cute dogs. They also shared in the show that a lot of the animals are rescues. And I love the idea of rescuing a sweet pup or kitty or even a bird from a shelter. And then they get clapped for the rest of their life because they're such good boys and girls. It's also nice to have a family friendly show that people can enjoy and sit down in the middle of a long day. Everyone in the audience seemed to be enjoying it. It's funny, there's some good bits with the trainer and the animals and the guest volunteers. So I really do enjoy it. The hard thing about the show is where to rank it because it's about a 25, 30 minute show, which is a big chunkier day, especially for people that are doing park to park and they're trying to do all the roller coasters and all the other attractions and enjoy time in the wizarding world and et cetera, and et cetera. I certainly wouldn't pick this over something like spending time in Diagon Alley or riding something like Velocicoaster. I think it's much more of a nice to do as opposed to a must do when you're in these parks. However, if you do get to see it, I think you'll enjoy it as long as you like dogs. If you don't like dogs, look inside yourself. What's going on? As far as the ranking goes, I'm having problems deciding if it should go above or below the Celestina Warback slash Blues Brothers ranking because I think this is probably more universally appealing, but for me personally, as a Harry Potter fan, I'd rather be in Diagon Alley. And as someone who just likes to vibe to live music, I am much more likely to watch Blues Brothers than make time for this show. So I think in Molly's rankings, which is kind of what this is, I'm putting it under Blues Brothers and Celestina. Again, all that said, if you like dogs, I don't think you're gonna be disappointed if you see the show. But for us, we're headed back to where we all started. We're going back to New York. Back where we started several hours ago, headed to the other side of Revenge of the Mummy now to see Marilyn Monroe and the Diamond Bellas. This is another one of those small little shows, just a little street atmosphere. I love street atmosphere, y'all, street atmosphere. It's a bummer to me that so much of it has not returned at Walt Disney World, the citizens of Hollywood, the citizens of Main Street. It just enhances your experience so much. And I feel like these are the things that you don't schedule in your day, but when you stop and watch it, these are kind of the memories you have. Cause you of course love the attractions and the food and all the things, but like watching families dance to Vamos or laugh in the shows or jam out to the bee builders are like, these are just the nice family memories, right? As for you, tomorrow I want you to bring me some of those tacos. I don't care, it's Wednesday, Taco Tuesday every day. Oh my goodness, I'm a genius! 
Just saw the lovely Miss Marilyn and her Diamond Bellas. Uh, that's definitely the shortest show of all. The actual show portion of it is like six minutes, maybe seven. It's a fun little show. We've got a director come out and he's directing Marilyn and her Diamond Bellas in a new picture. Fun music, Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend, Candyman. And the director's actually really funny. I was watching him a lot this time and he was cracking up because he was like doing the choreo with them and cheering on the girls. So it's a very cute show. It feels very thematic to be here in the old timey New York area and have Marilyn here. It's fun that you get to have a little meet and greet with her afterwards if you'd like to get a picture with Marilyn Monroe. That said, this is easily the bottom of the list for me. I enjoyed the show. I'll stop and watch it occasionally if I'm walking by, but it's not only really, really short, but I don't think you can compare actual singing and playing of musical instruments and like dogs doing cool things and the vibe of the Vamos dance party to two short dance numbers with someone who's Marilyn Monroe. You know what I mean? So it's cute if you see it when you're walking by. It may make you chuckle, it may make you smile, but I definitely don't think that's one you need to prioritize out of the rest of the shows. Now we do have a little bit of a break until our next one, and I've actually never seen this one. So fun. I came over to Mel's Drive-In, which, spoiler alert, is where our next show takes place, and I was going to get something cool to drink, and there's a ton of characters out in the area. I met the trolls because I love Guy Diamond so much, but I've also seen the Madagascar penguins, some of the Simpsons. I saw the lion from Madagascar for a moment. This is usually where you can find the Scooby-Doo gang too. So tons of characters just out and about. Lots of fun on this kind of old Hollywood street right here. But I'm headed into Mel's to get something to sip upon quickly before our next show. Mel's is themed to be like an old fashioned 50s diner with milkshakes and burgers and chicken tenders. The food I've had here is fine, nothing phenomenal, but the theming is really cool. Highly recommend mobile ordering here as well. It's not peak lunch time anymore, so it's not quite as busy, but it can get really full at peak lunch and dinner time. While I sit here for a second, here's how you can find the show times. It's on your home screen of your Universal app. You're just gonna click shows. It's gonna bring it up to you in a map format. I like to click the hamburger menu up at the top to get it to spin around and be a list. So this is all entertainment. It's gonna show character experiences, interactive shopping experiences like wands and all of the shows. You can filter it if you'd like. So I filtered out uh, Islands of Adventure since I'm not going there today. And then it's gonna show me everything in Universal Studios Florida. So the Born Stuntacular, Animal Actors on Location. And then again, meet and greet type interactive experiences like meeting the night bus driver, there's Vamos, there's Celestina. And so if you click into any of the shows, it will give you all the show times. That way, if you want to plan or you can set a reminder. So for example, we are going to see the horror makeup show at 4.30. So I could click that and it would set a reminder if I ask it to. So that way I don't forget. So it's a good planning tool as well. Getting ready for the brand new drive-in and dance. This is the show I haven't seen before, um, but from what I know online, it's gonna be similar to Bamos where it's like a street party situation, but 50s theme. So I'm really excited. saw drive in and dance basically what happens there are some very cute dancers that come out in like 50 style outfits there's also some dancers dressed like the servers from mel's drive-in and then the 50 style dancers do like more of a classic 50 styles dance like a 
he said, she said kind of cute flirty dance with each other. And then the waiters bust out of nowhere and they crush it on the dance floor. Then after that, there's a lot of audience participation and they were encouraging people to come out and dance to things like Hey Mickey and Shout. It was very short, I will say that. The actual like choreographed part of it was just a few minutes. It was two or three songs. It was definitely shorter than Bamos earlier. And then people did seem to be having fun during the like group participation, audience participation moment. It definitely had the most difficult choreography of any of the dances that I'd seen so far today. I think it was the most like, especially the hip hop portion of it was very impressive choreography. All that said, it was not my favorite. I think I'm gonna rate it higher than Marilyn Monroe just because I think it was a more impressive show and I think the audience enjoyed the audience participation part of it. But I just, I kind of wanted more. I wanted more of the like 50 style dancing and singing. I wanted more 50 songs. Because um, even when they were doing the 50 style singing, it was too like Charlie Poof. So it's cute. If you're in the area, check it out. But there's tons of characters out here right now. And I think if I had time spending right here, I would spend time meeting like Boots and Dora and The Simpsons and maybe just catch glimpses of this. But yeah, let me, if you've seen the new show, let me know what you think down in the comments. But now from the newest show in the park to the oldest. I don't want to be negative about the new show because I could tell the dancers were having a great time and they were phenomenal. It just didn't seem like it had the same kind of heart and audience excitement and soundtrack as Bamos, which is the best comparison. But now we are headed to the horror makeup show. This is an opening day show and it's been dazzling guests ever since. Look, there's that girl with the cat ears. I have no idea who she is, but the children seem excited. I've never seen her before. Hold on. Cat ear cartoon kid. Cat ears for kids. No, who is she? What's your name? Y'all, I've Googled everything I can think of. I've Googled Universal Orlando Mean Greets Little Girl Cat Ears. I've Googled Cat Ear Little Girl Cartoon and I just get little cat ear headbands to buy. At one point I was getting an article about the history of Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Like, who are you? You're so cute. It'd be rude to just come up to you and ask who you are. So I, I need help. But for now, we gotta see the show. Universal's Horror Makeup Show. Again, opening day show, super fun. Hello. Hi. Just in time for the 4.30 show. Great. This is one of my favorite things at Universal Orlando, and not just because of the show, but because of the lobby. There are real movie props from Universal Movies dating back all the way to Psycho, but who cares about that when you've got the real Ben Gardner's head from Jaws, the greatest movie of all time. I love it in here. If you're a movie buff, make sure you come in this lobby and check out all the props prior to the show, or at least, even if you don't see the show, come in here. Now, I do want to give you a little heads up that this is not a family-friendly show, but it is about how they make horror movies um, from the oldest ones, like the Universal Monster movies, up to some newer technology. Uh, and then it's live on stage. So there are some, you know, there's fake gore and the hosts, which are a huge reason I love the show, because they're very off the cuff and make relevant jokes and, and change up the jokes and everything. Um, they don't curse or anything, but they're definitely more on the adult humor side. So just keep that in mind. And uh, here we go. Also the show, if you want like the best seats in the house does fill up a little quicker. Uh, it does take Express here if you have Universal Express, but I recommend getting here like 15 minutes before the show and you should be okay to get a seat. Alex Ross! Hey, hi everybody! Welcome to Horn Night Time Show! I'm dying! Nobody cares, nobody cares. <laughs> The knives and blades that you're gonna see on the stage or on the screens today, they're all fake. You can see what it's like when it's activated running on a pneumatic system. Oh, it's air pressure, yeah. I'm sorry. See, this isn't Disney World. I don't have to be nice to the children. Okay. Just saw the horror makeup show and I love the gift shop that you come out into. There's these cool figures from all the classic universal monsters, Dracula, Bride of Frankenstein, Frankenstein's monster, Wolfman, and the creature from the Black Lagoon. So if you're a monster movie fan, come in and snap a cute picture. There's also tons of cool monster gear in here that you don't see a lot of places. Gets me excited for Halloween Horror Nights. You know, I do love the horror makeup show. In fact, I'm putting it at number one. As far as a must-see goes, 
It's an opening day show. It is the very essence of Universal Studios Florida, not only because it talks about making movies, but because it features some of these original Universal monsters. Universal is the originator, the founder, the first to create these incredible monster movies. And one, it's so cool that they have so much history in the lobby. The fact that you can see props from Psycho and Jurassic Park and Frankenstein and Jaws and Chucky and all these films that you know and love is really cool. Second, the show is hilarious. I laugh out loud every time. The hosts are so funny. Uh, they make little new jokes and they twist it. So even though I've seen the show many times, I don't actually ever know what's going to come out of their mouth. They do another great job with audience participation. It's really interesting to see props from shows like American Werewolf in London, which changed how movie magic is made. I think it's just a really entertaining show. Plus, you're sitting down in air conditioning, if nothing else. So for me, as far as if you're going to see one show when you're at Universal, this is the one. It is the most universal. I think it's the funniest. It's a great show. Absolutely put it on your list while you're here. And now we are headed to our final show of the day, The Born Stunt-tacular. As the name might suggest, this is a stunt show themed to the Born films. I actually really like the original Born movies. I haven't seen all of them, but when the first few came out, I really, really liked them. I love a good action movie, you know? Maybe surprising, but I do. I mean, they're no Fast and the Furious, but they're pretty good. Just as a warning, if you're headed to see the Born Stuntacular 1, it is very popular, so I would get there a little earlier. It does have Express, so that is helpful, but I would get there if you're coming to one of the middle of the day shows when people are trying to avoid the heat like 30 minutes early. Also note that there is fake gunfire and smoke and things like that, so just keep that in mind uh, with your kids or if, if you're sensitive to those sort of things. When you start off through the queue, you're actually gonna see some props from the Bourne films, like that car over there. I mean, Express Line, uh, but we are gonna look at some different images from the show. I haven't watched these movies in so long. Should I watch them? But the show is gonna take you on an adventure with Jason Bourne as people try and get in contact with him, as he tries to hide from the agencies. You know, the same thing as the plot of all the movies. There's three of them? Four of them. I don't remember. This motorcycle was featured in the Bourne Ultimatum. There you go. Pretty cool. And this car was in the Bourne Identity. Very awesome. Oh, it must have been the one they drove down the stairs, hence why it's driving down the stairs. Now I'm not able to film in the show. Well, The Born Stuntacular was number 11, our final show of the day. I do enjoy The Born Stuntacular. I think the technology is very cool. They're using the same technology that was developed for Fast and the Furious, the party scene, where it's digital people, but it's shot in a way that makes them seem realistic. And there are certain scenes where I truly cannot tell who is a live actor on stage and who is digital. It's that good in certain scenes, like the fighting scene at the beginning. At one point, somebody passes a knife to like a digital person, I'm pretty sure, passed a knife to a real person and it's so seamlessly done, it's pretty impressive. I also think there's one scene where they make it seem like it's slow-mo, which was really cool. I do think a few of the scenes last a little too long, like the scene with the helicopter, and I actually wish the plot wasn't so convoluted and heavy on Bourne plot. I think that stunts are really cool. I don't mind the idea of using Jason Bourne as the base of it, but it seems a little bit like too much, like we're involved with the Treadstone and the whole thing, I think it'd be easier and more straightforward if they just were like, Jason Bourne's important and missing, let's get him, and like lost some of the calling on the phone and all this stuff, uh, similar to the Indiana Jones stunt show over at Hollywood Studios. Speaking of which, while I think more people obviously have an emotional attachment to Indiana Jones and you can't beat that music, I do think the stunts in this one are, while different, I think some of the technology is a little bit more impressive, and it's certainly the most impressive show we've seen today when it comes to technology. That said, I don't think this one is a must-see for me as much as other ones. I do think if you're gonna sit down and do one of these longer shows in the air conditioning, that's gonna take you know a 30, 45 minute chunk out of your day. I think Horror Makeup Show is the one. It's just down the road. I think that one's more classic, more original, and and just more universal. I think if you've gone through everything else on your list or you've never seen the show before, you love action movies, you're avoiding some of the rides, then it's a fun show to see. But for me, it would not be a top tier priority in this park alone, not even counting the other park. Because in this park, you've got things like Diagon Alley, Revenge of the Mummy, Men in Black, E.T., and some of the other shows. 
Before I go through the rankings though, I wanna commend Universal's performance team. I wanna commend their entertainment team. Every team member I saw today was happy, was smiling, was putting on a great show. So this is just my personal rankings. This is not disparaging of the entertainment offerings here. Cause again, I think they're great. But in 11th place, we have Marilyn Monroe and the Diamond Bellas. Number 10, Drive In and Dance. Number nine, Sing It, the acapella group. Number eight, The Born Spentacular. Tied for six, The Blues Brothers and Celestina Warbeck. In five, Animal Actors on Location. Tied for third, Vamos and The Tales of Beetle the Bard. Number two, The Beat Builders. And number one, The Universal Horror Makeup Show. But that's just my list. Let me know what tops your list when it comes to Universal Entertainment down in the comments. Let us know what other kinds of challenges and videos you wanna see here at Universal and beyond. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, come hang out in Discord. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly and it's been magical. Update on the cat child. I posted it on Patreon for our close friends, which is a perk of some of our Patreon tiers, and uh, asked them who it was, and the answer, Gabby from Gabby's Dollhouse. No idea what that is, but she's cute, and she's here, if that helps you.